a dramatic season nears its conclusion. This instalment of the Big Match Revisited features Chelsea's crucial second division game against Notts County. And at the top of the first division, Liverpool host Arsenal and Manchester United face Norwich. Here's Brian Moore. And welcome again to the Big Match, where today we reflect that escalating battle at the very top of the first division, because in our programme today we have action from Liverpool against Arsenal and Norwich City against Manchester United, while our main match takes us to the heart of the battle at the top of the second division, with Chelsea against Notts County. But now it's off to Stamford Bridge, where Chelsea face Notts County, and where the Chelsea manager, Jeff Hurst, spoke to the 24,000 crowd before yesterday's game, thanking them for their support, and above all, urging them to give Chelsea one last shout that might just take them into the first division next season. Stamford Bridge, of course, has the look of a first division ground, but the question that's becoming harder to answer as the second division promotion race reaches its climax is, does the team itself also look ready for the first division? This Chelsea side has taken only two points from its last possible eight and hopes that skipper and central defender Mickey Droy would have recovered from chicken pox in time to play have been dashed. Colin Pates then continues in that position. And up front, Clive Walker, who came on a substitute in the draw at Preston last week, now starts the game and it's Colin Lee who returns to the substitute's bench. As for Notts County, whose recent away record includes a win at West Ham, a draw at Newcastle and a victory at Cambridge, they're unchanged, but it still means that they are missing the former Queen's Park Rangers man, Don Masson, who is out through suspension. And in the midst of all the promotion tension, quite a little novelty with two Yugoslav goalkeepers in action here. Peter Barota of Chelsea on the left, and for Notts County, Radi Avramovic. And that surely is the first time that's happened at Stamford Bridge. And the referee today is Bill Bombroff from Bristol. And it's Lost County in the black and white stripes who get us underway, attacking the goal to our right. Chelsea in the strip of all blue. And needing to start the game with aggression and positively as well. Now, Jeff Hurst, the manager, was saying that their second half performances in their last two games against Luton and Preston have been really good. So much so that he thought of even putting the clock onto 5-4 to four before they came out today and giving them a a bit of a stiff talking to to make them think it was half time but anything he can do as he says to push Chelsea these last few feet into the first division and he's brought back Clive Walker number 10 on the ball here now who scored twice at Notts County earlier this season uh, but a tame little shot there of Ramovic no problem at all for him corner to County it's Gary Shelton who's going to take it Christie lying deep big Brian Kilkline is at the near post there for the little knock on but Barota oh my word he got it and lost it and it was as well for Chelsea that Fillery was back there Benjamin shot and a goal kick well, yes examining the gloves maybe a little bit of Nerve showing for the big Yugoslav goalkeeper Peter Barota. Was great buddies in uh, Yugoslavia with uh, the goalkeeper at the other end, Radi Avramovic, who used to play for Rijeka near Hajduk Split on the coast. <laughs> Chelsea have lost their place right at the top and are here in third position. They can't afford to slip anymore. It's Colin Pates who's up there with the attack now, and Shelton showing nice control there. Finding Richards, the long sweeping ball to McCulloch on the far side, being supported by Mayer, and through the middle, Richards, who's come from behind, and in the end, Barota had to dive at the fullback's feet. Well, that was a terrific break by Pedro Richards, I must say. He'd started it, and he very nearly, but for Barota, would have finished it off. And Richards again. County, as you'd expect, playing the more relaxed football, as Tristan Benjamin showed there. The owners so much on Chelsea to produce something today. County, who are way down the table, can really just enjoy themselves. They're in no danger of relegation. And, oh, now this could be a chance for McCulloch. Well, he missed it. Benjamin tried to make something of it. Well, I must say, they're lining up for shots. And again, well, well Chelsea will never have a better escape than that. That 
was absolutely amazing how men missed it, half hit it, passed the buck to somebody else, and in the end, uh, Benjamin Tristan hit it wide. Fillory. Britain. Bumstead. And now Chivers. Chelsea trying to put something together here. Langley off in pursuit again. Stubbs has gone there with him. Bumstead has made a very good run there. Played in there for Walker. Brilliant save by Abramovich. Walker's speciality, those little touches. In fact, he got one at Notts County that wasn't unlike that. A cross in from the right. What a good run by Bumstead, though, and a lovely cross there. Walker unmarked. Got the touch he likes, but a really marvellous reflex save by the Yugoslav, Abramovich. Played there for Walker. Fillory, not much space there. And a free kick given to Chelsea. Fillory with the free kick. Oh, a little dummy there, and it was Britain who took it. Not it down there, and into the net by Chivers. relief to Stamford Bridge only his second goal of the season and the delight there the question really was whether it was a free kick in the first place but after Chelsea played that little dummy it was Ian Britton who crossed it in a glancing header from the fullback Gary Chivers and I thought it was going wide for a moment but it just crept in Chelsea won Notts County nil and Gary Chivers gets his second goal of the season Richards, Shelton, Christie going for this one, and there certainly seems to be, oh, it called for a good save by Barota, and what on earth were they doing in defence, Chelsea, there? They were caught absolutely square, and I'm bound to say that it seemed that uh, Gary Chivers was very relaxed indeed there, and uh, allowed Christie to get in behind him. What a good save, though, by Peter Barota. getting that ball in and Rofe belting it away into touch for a throw to Chelsea or to Notts County and the cross which is a good one towards Christie nodded it back again and Rofe getting the ball behind for the corner what a good whipped cross that was and uh, Chelsea were in all sorts of trouble Christie meeting it at the far post and Roth jumping up there and getting it behind for the corner. And certainly in one or two little breaks, Notts County with some good methodical football have looked very dangerous indeed. Stubbs trying to get up there and get that header in, but it's coming now for Benjamin, who will want to lift it back in there once more. The flag has stayed down, there's no offside in there, and it's not away yet. Christie now looking to get a shot in, and that hit Barota on the knee, and Chelsea really were lucky again there. Terrific reactions by the keeper because uh, Christie really caught that superbly. And away it went. Richards to Shelton. Harris. Stubbs. Bumstead. And Walker. Phil Kleins there with him. Langley with the shot. And a goal kick. Suddenly it seemed that Walker's acceleration was going to take him through there. He was brought down by Phil Klein. I go a little bit with the referee who let the game go on because the ball was coming towards Langley. And Langley was way off the mark.
Walker's all right. And Shorty in the end, getting it through to Richards, through to Benjamin, and Nick off there for Stubbs. And a long, high ball for McCulloch to chase, and nothing to go with him. Well, the ball's been shoved into the back of the net, but apparently there was a foul by McCulloch, who doesn't agree with it. And, well, it looked a bit tough to me. Very interesting one against one there. It would be interesting to see how Mickey Nutton would have uh, coped with McCulloch. Well, given by Harris to Mayer. And nodded away by Rove towards Britain. And Bumstead getting it away here for Langley. And the flag was up for offside. The move had broken down, so it was justified, I suppose, in that the linesman put it down as the ball comes through to Fillery, only to be stopped by Gary Shelton, who's looked probably not count his best player in this first half. Well, in spite of that, it's Chelsea who are in the lead with the goal to nil. The goal scored by Gary Chivers after 18 minutes. But there's no doubt about it, on the run of the play, Chelsea could easily be behind by now. Uh, and indeed, it's been some brilliant goalkeeping by Peter Barota that has uh, made sure that Chelsea go into the interval, leading by 1-0. to nil. So a lot more to come on the big match today. A half-time score then here at Stamford Bridge is Chelsea 1, Notts County 0, and we'll be back with the second half. to Stamford Bridge. We await the start of the second half. Chelsea leading by a goal to nil, scored by Gary Chivers. They've yet to play Swansea away, and then their last game is Oldham here at home. And uh, Jeff Hurst, their manager, saying, well, if we get five points out of the six, I think we'll make it. But six out of the six, obviously, would be even better. Well, they're on their way at the moment with that goal lead. But Notts County showing a lot of spirit and a lot of skill and flair in that first half, suggesting that the game is anything but over yet. But here's Langley. And that went right across. In fact, it might even have glanced the top of that uh, Notts County crossbar. Langley always so full of life and uh, getting free of his markers on that occasion. Notts County have won only one of their last seven. That was away to Cambridge United. They won that 3-2. And there aren't many clubs who've been to Cambridge and won this season. Also blighted West Ham's promotion prospects a few weeks ago with a victory at Upton Park. Shelton, Richards. Shelton, no, he didn't show too much of that to Ron Harris, but it's surely a Notts County throw. And certainly, uh, it's been quite a battle off the field as well as on the field for Chelsea, and uh, their chairman, Brian Mears, I'm sure, it'll mean an awful lot, there he is in the dark glasses, it'll mean so much for him, personally, if they can get into the first division. Christie, Shelton, McCulloch, some nippy play here by McCulloch. The little chip coming back there and knocked behind by Bumstead just as Hunt was closing in. That was really good play there by Ian uh, McCulloch. Winding his way through there and that nice little chip at the end. And as well for Chelsea, the Bumstead was there to nod it away. So Shelton with the corner for Notts County. Backward nod there by McCulloch, but a safe grab for Chelsea by their keeper, Peter Barota. Rofe. Langley. Played on there. Well, there can't be any argument about that. Even if the previous decision was slightly debatable, and I'm inclined to think the Rhinesman was right, there was absolutely no doubt about that one. Walker a good three or four yards offside. And Brian Stubbs with the free kick for Notts County. Christie trying to flick it on. Harris getting it away. 
no offside this time and they're calling the keeper out of the box but in the end the ball bounds through to him sufficiently quickly Fillery a little touch for Britain played on into space there nicely for Langley good ball by Britain and a chance for Fillery oh my goodness how close what a difference that might have made because you get the impression, as I say, that Chelsea are by no means out of the wood yet, though they're leading 1-0. But a lovely ball that found Langley down the left there. And Fillery should surely have made that 2-0. Free kick for the kick on Walker. the ankle again it was the right ankle I seem to remember in the first half the first injury he had and I think the referee might well feel justified in saying that you must either play on or get off and indeed there's the side of a referee helping the player off so Chelsea for the moment down to 10 men so Harris with the free kick no it's going to be Britain instead a little dummy played there again and that time Kul Klein was there to get it away for Notts County now Harris trying to play for Britain again. They played him offside, but he didn't work. And in the end, it was Stubbs who got it away in great excitement there as Nutton came in there and uh, Christie right in the back of the net. It's taken quite a thump there. Well, if he and Stubbs hadn't been there, there's no doubt at all about it that... Uh, that would have been goal number two for Chelsea. It was Britain here, talking to Fillery. Little Ian Breton, who suddenly was free, and Notts County thought they played him offside, but he was onside all right. And how close it was, with uh, Nutton coming in hard on that Notts County defence. And if it was Notts County who made, if anything, the better chances in the first half, it's Chelsea who are making the better chances in the second half. And Walker wants to come back on, the referee says he can come back on. And so both sides are at full strength as Ian Britton now takes his corner and indeed plays it wide here for Clive Walker. And County hadn't had an opportunity of picking him up. That would have been interesting. And there's a good ball played by Bumstead. This time Britton's offside. And it's going to be a free kick to Notts County. in their excitement some of the Chelsea fans are not letting logic get in the way of their desire to urge Chelsea on towards victory and I think Britain clearly was offside there Dennis Rowe for the header and uh, Ray O'Brien holding off Clive Walker successfully oh. Well, that'll come now for Bumstead, it might come for Langley! Oh, what an amazing uh, sequence there! With the ball, in fact, bouncing off the uh, Notts County defender. And suddenly opening up a half chance there, maybe more, for Bumstead and Langley between them. Britain. Walker. It's amazing, with so much attack, they've only had one goal. But, uh, a strong challenge there by Ray O'Brien on uh, Clive Walker. Another free kick. And the referee who hadn't started... Oh, he's given a yellow card to Ray O'Brien. Well, my impression was that he was a bit slow making up his mind on that, to be absolutely honest about it. Uh, the crowd was shouting for something. And Mr Bombroff decided that was worth a yellow card. Britain will take it. No, it'll be Fillery instead. Hit in low there. And McCulloch here. A little touch again by him. A little flick on again. And this could be a good break. They've got a lot of people forward, including Richards on the far side. And McCulloch up as well. What's he? The linesman is flagging for an offside. That's incredible. Maybe it was uh, Mayer on this side. But the flag was up and down, up and down. And Notts County not very happy. Ben 
Benjamin, but still only one goal in it. And a yellow card this time on Bumstead. That must have been for a foul on uh, Ray O'Brien. Crowd are chanting, we want a ref. And now Rolf with the cross. Britain on this side, too high for Mayor. Britain looking maybe just to knock it back in there. Bumps it instead though. Now Britain. And they've got a corner. And in fact, Colin Lee is going to come on, maybe before this corner's taken. And indeed, it's going to be Clive Walker, who has been hobbling and been in the wars a bit, who is coming off. The crowd are giving him a really generous round of applause. And the manager at the back, Jeff Hurst, he's the manager who's made that decision to make the substitution and knows that there are 16 minutes left and he'll want Chelsea to be hanging on now. Colin Lee on then, and Britain with the corner. And my word, Lee very nearly got in straight away. Instead of that, a good save, and Langley against the post. And Benjamin gets it away. Well, that was so nearly, that was a good shot by Pates. And then when the keeper saved it, Langley was there from close range to knock it against the post. And it'll go for the corner. Right at the death now. A better overall performance by them today, there's no question of that. And it looks as though that goal by Gary Chivers in the first half is going to be the one that really counts. Lee up again with the header, tipped away that time by... Avramovic. So it's another corner. Referee with another look at his watch. Another corner for Chelsea. Fillory and Britain saying that the Notts County players aren't back the required distance, and it's Britain with that long, long cross again in Colin Lee up once more. And a shove down on Kilpine. And everybody in the crowd whistling now. Played nearly three minutes. And how far are they going to be able to go? Well, Brown was stopped. And now they won't want him to whistle for the moment until they see what Britain can do here. Played in there towards Chivers, but too close to the keeper. Now the whistles will start again. Christie played back for O'Brien. Surely not going to play it back to his own keeper. Phil Klein. Pates. Free kick to Notts County. Well, we've played four minutes of injury time now. And Jeff Hurst just waiting for that final whistle, knowing that the team that he's taken over this season is still very much on course for promotion if they can hold on to this lead there goes the final whistle as Mayer crosses it in Jeff Hurst goes off to the dressing room Gary Chivers contemplates the goal he scored only a second of the season that produces two points for Chelsea and indeed a better performance by Chelsea overall with a lot of pressure coming uh, from them in the second half, but still not quite able to finish off as many would like to see them do. But a final score then here at Stamford Bridge. And it's Chelsea 1, Notts County 0. Well, I thought that was a better performance by Chelsea, and there's no doubt it was a crucial win, particularly when you look at the top of the second division table, where Leicester won at Wrexham, where Sunderland got that away point at Bristol Rovers, and Birmingham uh, beat Luton. And the other team still in with a chance, of course, because of all their games in hand, West Ham, they had a win at Cardiff. 
Uh, what about the matches they still have to play? Well, Leicester have just one home game against Charlton to come and two away against Bristol Rovers and Orient. Chelsea uh, away to Swansea and then at home to Oldham. Sunderland, two at home against Watford and against West Ham. That's a crucial one. And away to Cardiff. And then Birmingham City, one at home, two away at home to Notts County, away to West Ham and Burnley. And then West Ham with their six, three of them at home against Birmingham City on Tuesday when they can do themselves such a favour, and Chelsea too, of course. Then at home to Shrewsbury and Charlton, and then three away at Oldham, Bristol Rovers and Sunderland. Well, the Chelsea manager, Jeff Hurst, knows only too well how tight it is at the top. Uh, he thought Chelsea played better yesterday, uh, but he agreed they were still guilty of missing chances. But the question remains, if they do go up to the first division, are they going to be good enough? I would probably go along and say next year we might not be good enough. But I think this is hypothetical. The only argument this year is whether we're going to go up. And then we sit back after May the 3rd and discuss it clinically with the staff here and with the directors to decide what we need and how much we've got to spend on, on players. And I've not looked any farther. We've obviously looked at first division players this year, naturally, in, on, on our course in scouting. But that's not the argument. The only argument is, is whether we're going to go up. And then we'll discuss it then. I mean, at, at this moment, do you think you're going up? We've got a chance. We've got a chance. There's four teams, as I say, even before today, I felt there's four teams. And those, it's three out of four. And we know exactly what we've got to do. We've, if we get four out of four, I think we will go up. Three out of four is going to be tight. Two out of the four, which will get us 52, which initially we felt would get us up, we know now will not. I think if we are realistic, um, we are going to need some money. But how much is available? Really, I said uh, to the press today, that what, we've, uh, what we need, we're not sure whether we're going to be able to get it. I think the club, to a degree, the club is out of my hands on May the 3rd. It's then back at board level to decide how much money they can afford to keep us in the first division if we get there. What, what do you think you do need? Oh, you can't talk about figures. It depends no, on I don't who... Mean, I don't mean money. I'm sorry, I don't mean money. I mean in terms of playing strength now. I think we need uh, at least two or three players to increase, to improve the first team squad. No doubt about it. Um, in the first division. But uh, it'd be silly talking about that until we know exactly where we are. But you have asked me that, that you want through the good offices of the big match to make a public appeal for something that the club still does need badly. Yes, we have, in the recent weeks, have had problems with the training ground. We are looking to get one of us for ourselves. We use the Metropolitan Police training ground at Ember Court at the moment and we're very deeply grateful for the use because without their help we would be training on the car park virtually. And in recent weeks we've made every effort to acquire a training ground, either to lease or to buy, and we're running out of ideas. And we, we are looking for anybody that can possibly help in any respect to give us a training ground, A, for pre-season, B, for the use of one year certainly, minimum, or even to buy for, for the long-term good of Chelsea Football Club. Jeff Hurst, and if you do have any ideas about that training ground, please write direct to Jeff at Stamford Bridge and not to me. Well, who amongst the old-timers watching yesterday could possibly have foreseen the day when in a league match at Stamford Bridge, both the goalkeepers would be Yugoslavs, Peter Barota of Chelsea and Radi Avramovic of Notts County. Oh, I, I, I know him 12 years, maybe. We are together being in a young uh, Yugoslav selection in Makarska. Name one place and see Makarska. Yes. Has he changed much over here? No, no I think no. It's your first visit to Stamford Bridge. The first time you have played uh, first, here at Chelsea. First time play, uh, but I know Chelsea uh, have very good ground, uh, be, uh, nice supporters, and it's nice play here. Yes. What about the team, the Chelsea team? Well, I must, I must first say, uh, I, I, uh, all the best for next next season. But I think uh, in this division, second division. Um, many clubs uh, very good and uh, I know I don't think if Chelsea stay in same player same uh, be maybe difficult in the first division, in the first division. Yeah. for us it's big problem next season you know uh, but I think uh, just has to doing very well especially because uh, he's young manager I'm very pleased with uh, his performance and I think uh, he got a good uh, future we play the last couple of games, you know, Brian, it's especially uh, very, very, very difficult for us because big pressure for us, especially because very young side, unexperienced side, except Ronnie Harris, 
uh, and a uh, lot of pressure. We need promotion. After that, we are before match. Whole fellas is uh, <laughs> scared, and uh, but we play always uh, last uh, second half much better. This is typical for a young side. Tell me just on a private thing before we go on. <clears throat> you're you're an artist, a painter, and you've just had an exhibition, haven't you? Can you tell me about that? Yeah, I th um, uh, this is not, nothing special. Uh, I've been student, uh, used to be uh, learn uh, college for art painting. But uh, now this is my relax after hard matches and uh, nothing else. This is my hobby. Uh, I'll be very, very enjoyed after, after my first exhibition in England. Uh, people is very enjoy the same and uh, I think it's quite good quality. But uh, people don't understand my picture because it's abstract picture. Uh, abstract? Yeah. The two Yugoslav goalkeepers and indeed what a fine game Peter Brota had for Chelsea yesterday. Welcome back. And now we go straight to the top of the first division, where before yesterday's games, Liverpool held a two-point lead over Manchester United with a game in hand. So the stakes were still pretty high as Liverpool went into their match against Arsenal at Anfield yesterday. Of course, it's the third time they've met in a week, with another meeting to come in that second replay of the FA Cup at Villa Park on Monday week. Well, this episode was covered by Granada Television with the commentator Gerald Sinstat, Liverpool in the all-dark strip. Early days, of course, to talk about uh, playing for a point at Anfield with uh, only 11 minutes gone. Soonis. Oh, we. Dalglish and Fairclough in the middle, but that was a header away by O'Leary. Soonis. Owen. Dalglish to Kennedy and back again. And Dalglish goes through and scores. Sun and the wind, Sunderland got it. And then Hansen came in hard on Stapleton. Walford. Chased by Lee and he'll have to hustle. And away goes Lee, but Walford has long legs and a quick turn. And he's given it to Doug Leash. Johnson. Johnson could have taken more time with that. Jennings was a long way out of goal. Arsenal still haven't got it clear because Neil plays it up to Lee. Lee in, and Hollins is there, and Walford, and Walford has given it away again. Neil Johnson will chase it out. He's got support from Kennedy. Maybe Arsenal are marshalled now. And there's a chance for Hollins to clear, and he gives it away. And Arsenal seem to have lost all their composure at the back. Fairclough. Good turn. Collins winning it from Sunis's challenge. Fairclough. No offside flag. Corner. David Fairclough attacking down right and left and causing problems on both sides. Overcomes that corner in the wind and Stapleton gets it away. Sunis. Dalglish. Dalglish gets it over and Fairclough is in. Irwin off the bar. Dalglish and it's a goal kick. And Colin Irwin was very close to his third goal of the season there. Right foot. And it needed only to have been a couple of inches lower. Really was skidding about all over that six yard area. Fairclough didn't get a touch. Irwin coming in and sees it come back off the bar, and then it was Dalglish who turned it just wide. Some posing problems when that long ball comes through the air from Jennings, but so far, Liverpool have been really under remarkably little pressure at that end. Gatting, and that's offside by Talbot. Fairclough 
taking on Rice and crossing early and that was Young stretching out a toe it really wasn't very far wide of his own post a yard maybe not much more cross struck in low from Fairclough and Willie Young just put out a foot really didn't know where it was going Warner struck in oh and against the post off an Arsenal defender Warner came over and I think it was Walford who got the touch high up by the angle Remarkable how close their duels with Arsenal have been over the years, not just over this last seven days. They've been playing each other since 1893. And if Liverpool win today, they will be level with 47 victories apiece. Walford's throw. Sunderland flicking it on. Stapleton getting it back off Hansen. And a flicked header by Sunderland, caught by Ray Clements, and that really is just about the first save that Clements has had to make. Young and Highway going up together, and then Lee tries one. Well, that was a bit more like it from Sammy Lee. 30 yards out, Sammy Lee. But when the ball came to him, didn't hesitate. Highway went up for the header and then right foot on the volley from Lee, but uh, Jennings well behind him. Stapleton trying to nod it on for Sunderland, and Sunderland turning it back, and there's the equaliser! And that's the danger that's been there all the time. Torbert has got the goal, and it is now one all. Well, that has always been the danger. Torbert just stooping for the glancing header and it is now one all with 11 minutes to go and Arsenal will feel completely vindicated by their policy. Well done Arsenal, I hope that puts them in good heart for their battle in Juventus this coming week. So our next match now is Norwich City against Manchester United. United, the only team capable of catching Liverpool, of course. The pictures come from Anglia Television, the commentators Jerry Harrison, with Manchester United in the dark shirts. Jordan and Jones. Well played by Jordan, trying to find Koppel here, and down he goes, fairly spectacularly, as Peters picks up and runs into trouble. Koppel now trying to turn Simmons in for McElroy in a good position. Well saved. McElroy coming through as he does so dangerously from midfield and picks up that space in the penalty area. And that was a very, very good chance and an excellent save. Nicely worked by Koppel who spotted him. Didn't take long to line that one up and good work by Hansbrook. Seventh corner, Koppel to knock it in. Wind causing problems for everyone. McElroy had a little dig, but the ball, in fact, was in the hands of the goalkeeper. Floated into the space. Players coming in to meet it. Good effort by the centre-half Moran. Smothered by the goalkeeper, and then McElroy went in. too quick there from Wilkins but the pace of the game has hotted up a little bit well played by McDowell drives one in deflected well held in the end that was a fine effort and probably Norwich at his best but now they've got problems at the other end Jordan with Richie coming to the near post and Koppel's back there. Well held again by Hansen. Well, that's more like it. Well, the crowd enjoyed that, and particularly the run by McDowell from a distance. Wax one deflected. The goalkeeper had to change his angle and held it well. 
Galford, Fashionu in here, protecting it well, and being fouled by Kevin Moran. And within two minutes of the start of the second half, Fashionu has shown a couple of good touches against Moran. Now McDowell trying to put one into space, Fashionu's in there! That was a chance! Definite chance of Mickey Thomas, you could tell by his face as he turned away that he thought it was a chance and a let off. Nicely played by John McDowell. In comes Fashionu, good leap but wide. Well, Norris getting the bird a little bit here, but it's not easy to work it out of defence against this wind. Moran, McDowell, Peters, and into the path of Ritchie. Good drive, and now it's Jordan. Joe Jordan beats Hansbury. Manchester United take the lead. Well, they battled for that in midfield, and it fell, fortunately, in some ways, to Andy Ritchie. But having fallen for him, he made it count. A good drive, a good save, but here's Jordan, and he makes no mistake. Although Hansbury almost got an arm to it. Jordan out for Ritchie. Behind him is Koppel. Well won by Simmons. Well, it's going to have been a good battle. There haven't been many chances. But at the moment, it's United hanging on to that one goal and breaking forward here with the all-action Mickey Thomas. Back for Arthur Overston, and there's a chance here. And deflected in by Jordan. And that certainly wraps the game up. Off his knee, but it doesn't matter. And Thomas, as he has done throughout the game, worked for this patiently to Alderston, then suddenly he's deep into the Norwich penalty area, just a touch, and Hansbury can't get it. Should he have come for it? 2-0 to Manchester United, and uh, look where that leaves things now. Liverpool just one point in the lead, but with a game in hand, and they've got a better goal difference as well. That's going to be worth another point to Liverpool, uh, which is well worth remembering. Uh, and the matches they still have to play, that makes a bit of interesting reading as well, because Liverpool have three away and one at home, and United two at home, one away. Let me just also point out that they both play this coming Wednesday night. Liverpool away to Stoke and Manchester United at home to Aston Villa. And with Liverpool away to Palace next Saturday and Manchester United at home to Coventry, it means that to Liverpool have two away games in the coming week. Manchester United have two at home. Who knows what it's going to be like this time next weekend. Well, now it's time this weekend for Golden Goals. And it's your last chance to win our fabulous prize this year, a trip for two to the European Cup final in Madrid next month. More of that in a moment, because now we show you again the six goals that you have to put into an order of merit. Remember, which is best, second best, right down to which is sixth best, all six in an order of merit. So here we go again then with goal A, scored by Glenn Hoddle for Tottenham against Nottingham Forest at White Hart Lane. Alexa. Larry Lloyd underneath this one, but beaten in the air by Jones. Armstrong's coming in there. Oh, a tremendous goal by Huddle. 1-0 to Tottenham. Goal B is by Phil Boyer, and it's for Southampton against Nottingham Forest at the Dell. Williams again. Oh, Boyer showing a nice touch. What a lovely trap and turn that was to Graham Baker. This is a great bit of play from Southampton. The Shannon, oh! Goal C. It's Eric Gates, and this was one for Ipswich Town against Manchester City at Portman Road. Manor up nicely. Here's Gates again against Booth. Oh, a brilliant shot. A beauty from Gates. Goal D is by Tommy Cassidy for Newcastle United in their game against Queen's Park Rangers at St. James's Park. With, this is Rafferty, 
but that's straight to Shanks, and Rafferty's had another go at it. And Connolly's in there. Connolly against Wicks. Cassidy. Oh, that's a superb goal from Tommy Cassidy. Oh, what a cracker. Goal E, it's Glenn Hoddle again, this time for Spurs in the cup tie against Birmingham City at White Hart Lane. Now Perryman. Here's Hewton. Giora. Hoddle letting it run there, taking it back from Armstrong. A beautiful move. Oh, a magnificent goal. Hoddle. Goal F is by Tony Morley for Aston Villa. This is against Ipswich at Villa Park. Knocks that in. McNaught got a touch. Bullivant back to Cowens. And a shot. A great ball. Oh, what a goal from Morley. Out of nothing. Tony Morley. Just to recap then, these are the six. Goal A, Glenn Hoddle. That's the one against Nottingham Forest. Goal B, Phil Boyer. Goal C, Eric Gates. Goal D, Tommy Cassidy. Goal E, that's the Glenn Hoddle one against Birmingham. And goal F, Tony Morley. Today we leave you with that Chelsea victory that pushes them that little bit closer to the first division. It took good work at both ends of the field yesterday at Stamford Bridge to make that possible. Shelton. Christie going for this one. And there certainly seems to be... Oh, it called for a good save by Barota. And what on earth were they doing in defence, Chelsea, there? And it's not away yet. Christie now looking to get a shot in and then hit Barota on the knee. And Chelsea really were lucky again there. A little dummy there, and it was Britain who took it. Not it down there, and into the nets!